Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Send your salams and where you're from. We'll get started shortly, inshallah ta'ala. We'll get started shortly, inshallah. And we'll get started shortly, inshallah ta'ala. And Sundus, if you tune in, tell us your riddle soon so people have a chance to answer. <clears throat> Nimra, alaikum assalam, I'm doing good. Hello, I'm Koliali. Alaikum assalam, Khadija in India, alaikum assalam, Sophia Donald, alaikum assalam. Zahra in Pakistan, wa alaikum as -salam. London, Tasneem in London, wa alaikum as -salam. Nurin in Bangladesh, wa alaikum as -salam. Samina in London, wa alaikum as -salam. New here in Maryland, wa alaikum as New here, Wasif, wa alaikum as Wasai in Kashmir, wa alaikum as -salam. Sylvia, wa alaikum as -salam. Sylvia, are you coming to Visionaire this year? Uh, Zahra alaikum as -salam. somebody from Brooklyn. Who's in Brooklyn? Masood in Brooklyn, Ramadan Mubarak. Alaikum as -salam. Humayun in the UK, wa alaikum as -salam. Aisha Jello, wa alaikum as -salam. How are you doing today? Uh, Sheikh, wa alaikum as -salam. I'm good. Saima Manchi, wa alaikum as -salam. Mukhtar Saleh, the mass huddle from Perth. What time is it in Perth right now? It would be 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. Hungary, Dina in Oregon, wa alaikum as -salam. Abdurrahman, wa alaikum as -salam, in Glasgow. Habiba, I'm doing well. Jazakallah khair. Mr. Zubair, welcome for tuning in. Maymuna in Holland, wa alaikum as -salam. Ahmed Rizvi in Virginia, wa alaikum as -salam. <laughs> Zahra, please reply my question tonight. What is your question tonight? Dina, هل الدعاء يغير القدر? Yes. Rosa, alaykum as -salam. It's 1 a.m. in Perth. Aisha, in Toronto, alaykum as -salam. Munirat, in, in Nigeria, alaykum as -salam. Sylvia, not this year. My du'as have been similar for a few years. Okay, inshallah. <laughs> Nimra, I still remember the squirrel attack from one of your Ramadan videos last year. It was after Ramadan, the squirrel attack. David in Italy, wa alaikum as-salam. Gosi in India, wa alaikum as -salam. Zahra said, please must reply to my question today. Inshallah. Post it when I'm asking questions. Like, just pop it up. Keep posting it. Rahma in Dubai, wa alaikum as -salam. Seema. Hey, it is the top of the hour. We will begin. Take one. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tarawih truffles. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbi ma wala amma ba'd. So today, the verses that we're speaking about are those verses in Surah An Nisa. In the first, sorry, in the fifth juz of the Quran, Surah An Nisa, this is verse 36 and 37. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in these verses, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al rajim. وَاعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا الَّذِينَ يَبْخَلُونَ وَيَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبُخْلِ وَيَكْتُمُونَ مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَأَعْتَدْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا So in these verses, the Surah An-Nisa, verses 36 and 37. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first I wanted to speak about um, stinginess. In the second verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَبْخَلُونَ Those who are stingy. And become um, and are miserly, 
But when I got more into learning about these verses, it's actually really interesting. The verse that comes before it, the verses that come after, the whole connection between the verses is really beautiful. And so I decided, hey, let's talk about all of it, inshallah ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, wa la tushriku bi Worship Allah, worship your Lord, Allah, worship Allah. Uh, and do not associate any partners with Allah. And with um, and and treat your parents with goodness. So this combination of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and treating parents good, we see it comes in the Quran in many locations. And as as one of the companions said, that there are um these you know, two things, they come together. If you're not thankful to Allah, sorry, if you're not thankful to your parents, then you're not thankful to Allah. They go, they're combined together. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, combines that worship me, be um, dutiful and be good to your parents. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a whole list of people that we should do ihsan towards, that we should do ihsan towards. And um, ihsan is doing good, taking care of them. Now look at look at this list and I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you take good care of the people in this list? Do you take care of these people in the list? Let's see. And I'll go one by one and you tell and you think to yourself. Um obviously you don't have to post it but do you take good care and even and includes financial it includes financial, as we're going to see about stinginess. The next verse speaks about stinginess. So we're talking about even financial aid and taking care of these people financially, giving gifts and so on. Number one is parents. Okay, so think about it. Think about your parents. Maybe they're alive. Maybe they passed away. Next one is your relatives. A lot of times we think about, hey, I'll take care of my parents, but my relatives... I don't know about them so much. We don't necessarily take care of them. The third one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this verse is orphans. And alhamdulillah, I think orphans, when we think, look at fundraisers around the world and stuff, there's good focus on orphans. So I would say, hey, we got some good marks on orphans. Number four is uh, the needy. And by good care, we're talking about good care. Uh, we're talking about financially. We're talking about taking care of them. Uh, doesn't mean that you become their their caregiver, but you're doing ihsan towards these people. You're doing good towards them. So the needy, are you doing good to the needy? Yeah. The next one, and now it starts getting a little tricky. The next one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal dil qurba, the neighbor that is near to you. So think about your neighbors right now. And I know sometimes in Western worlds or wherever you are in the world, we've got, not everybody here is from the Western worlds, but when in Western countries, it's really like people don't have good relationships with neighbors. Everybody kind of keeps to themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to do ihsan to your neighbors that are near to you. The next category, and ask yourself, do I do good to my neighbors that are near to me? And that might be more than just, you know, taking care of them financially. Maybe I'm good to them. You know, I keep my area clean because it's a communal place or I keep the noise low because I care about my neighbors and stuff like that. So maybe ihsan towards them is more than just, you know, something financial. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says the neighbor that is further away from you. This is interesting, I thought about this. A neighbor that's further away from me, maybe they're not in my part of the city, maybe they're not close to me, but they're on the other side of town. Sometimes we live in areas in, um, in our cities that are uh, you know, wealthy areas or something, and then there's another part of town. They're not necessarily our neighbors, but they're, they are our job. They are our neighbors, not specific. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the neighbor further away. Do we do ihsan to them as well? Um, <clears throat> and uh, the companion at your side. Companion at your side could be things like your colleagues, people that are nearby to you. They're in close proximity to you. They're not necessarily your neighbor, but they're close to you. Do you do ihsan to them? Your colleagues at work, your colleagues in school and people that you pass by. And maybe there's a janitor that you pass by. Are you doing ihsan to them? The companion at your side. Webn uh, Sabil and the traveler, the traveler. Somebody's coming from out of town. Um, 
do you have some, you know, is there part of your ihsan that goes towards those people that are out of town taking care of them? And those whom your right hand uh, possesses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then finishes the verse. And then we get to the point that, I, um, that I'm looking for here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah, la yuhibbu. Allah does not love. Okay, that's very intense. Allah does not love these people. Who are these people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love that we want to stay away from them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love those who are muhtal fakhur. Muhtal is um, a person who walks with conceit. So this is the person that might have their nose up, they're looking away, they're not looking at people. For example, I see this, um, uh, I'll tell you like personal, when people wear certain clothes, I mean in, in, uh, in countries around the world, when you wear certain clothes, you become like you're invisible. I don't want to mention countries, I don't want to mention what kind of clothes and stuff like that. But when you wear certain clothes from a certain country, and it's not, normally I don't wear these kind of clothes, those that I'm talking about. But when I do, I become inv uh, invisible. And there are people in society that, that we don't pay attention to, and we may walk beside them. Maybe we just don't see them, or maybe, may Allah forgive us, we're walking with conceit. That, oh, they're not from my people, or whatever, or they're not. And, different, and, and people... Uh, Fakhur, people show off with things like um, lineage. So I'm from this thing or I'm from nationality such and such. Or they might show off with skin color. I'm from this skin color or that color. And for some reason, there's a, there's a tendency to lean towards certain colors and then they, they get higher. Or somebody might show off because of wealth. Oh, their clothes are so clean and they smell so good. So then they're conceitful to others. Uh, another thing is position in society. Uh, we've seen in some cultures they have caste systems or is looking down upon a person. I remember somebody commenting, um, uh, they went from one country, I won't mention the country, but I'll mention where they went to. They went to Canada, yeah, Canada. And this person commented and they said in Canada, just because somebody is the janitor doesn't mean you can treat them badly. And he was very shocked by this because in his home country, if somebody was in a certain uh, occupation, they were in a, in a hierarch hierarchical uh, position and they would be looked down upon. Whereas in Canada, if you're the janitor and you treat a janitor badly, janitor will slap you in the face. Figuratively. Inna Allah la yuhibbu. Yes, and, and Wahida says also education degrees. So in some cultures, people are conceitful, maybe um, being conceitful to somebody else based on their education. Allah does not love those people. Inna Allah la yuhibbu man kana muhtalan fakhura. So to walk around conceitfully, and conceitfully, I thought, how do you walk conceitfully? And I thought of, you know, sometimes sports stars, I won't mention any sports stars, when they walk into the ring or they walk into their thing, they walk with conceit. Now, maybe they may be just joking, but to actually walk around with that kind of like, some people might call it swagger, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually doesn't love that. So the person who walks around with this conceit and boastfulness, Allah doesn't love them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them. That these are the, um, those who are stingy. Now if you look at the verse before, when we were speaking about ihsanan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then gives a whole list of people to do ihsan towards. And we're talking financially. We're talking financially, doing ihsan towards neighbors that are near, neighbors that are far, um, companions that are near to us, and so on. People are traveling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying ihsan. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes these people who he, whom he does not love as being stingy. They're stingy, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that another level of what Allah dislikes, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are stingy and they encourage other people to be stingy. They're stingy and they encourage other people to be stingy. So this would be, for example, may Allah forgive us, 
Um, sometimes there might be a fundraiser, for example, in Ramadan, there's lots of fundraisers. And then somebody might say something like, you know what, I'm not giving. And I encourage, you know, like maybe they're chit chatting at the shoe section or whatever. <laughs> That's not happening now. But they're chit chatting at the shoes and they're like, um, I would encourage you, don't give to these people, go give to somebody else. Or, or just spend it. <laughs> don't spend and don't spend on others. Sorry, don't spend and they encourage other people not to spend. They're stingy and they advise other people to be stingy. Umar Weston, Salam alaikum. I saw your salam there. I mentioned you one of the old videos, uh, the other videos the other day, Umar, but you weren't on when I was talking about it. Okay. So they're stingy and they advise other people to be stingy. And the, the bakhil, the person who is stingy, whenever they give something, they feel as if, and may Allah protect us and you wanna think about this, when you give something, do you feel like you have lost this thing, like it's gone forever? That's the, um, um, that's the attitude and the feeling of the person who's stingy. They feel like, hey, if I don't give this thing, then I'm going to be noble and I'm gonna be so big. And when they give these things to other people, then they feel like they've lost it. May Allah forgive us, may Allah protect us. That that's the attitude of the stingy person and the believer wants the opposite. That in fact, if you want something and you want it forever, you want it to always be yours, then give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the beginning of this Ramadan, actually even before Ramadan, I had this, um, you know, there was some people that got laid off. And... Um, they're not, they're not my employees, they're just, I would consider them based on what we're saying here, uh, uh, the neighbors that are further away. That's what I would, I would define them, neighbors that are further away. And they got laid off and they're not gonna have work and I decided to pay their salary. They're, um, they, they get paid less, but I said, hey, I'm gonna pay like multiple people, I'm gonna pay their salary. And then I kind of freaked out. I'm like, am I gonna be able to handle paying their salary? And then I thought to myself, SubhanAllah, they need help. Whoever is in the assistance, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in their assistance. So I said, I will give. And I made the promise and I, and I went and I, I made that intention. And SubhanAllah, that same evening, money that was owed to me was, I got a message that it's being sent to me that same evening after I'd made that intention. Actually, it was like one hour later from the time I made the intention, and the money that was being sent to me was 20 times, was 20 times the amount that I had made the intention to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it actually, I think it might actually have been like, yeah, it was 20 times. So I think to myself, man, I should have made an intention to give more. And I keep reminding myself about this, that as you are, um, as you are, uh, seeing people, this economic wave that's going to hit next. Now, uh, alhamdulillah, the, the COVID virus is kind of like toned down a little bit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But the next wave is people going to be coming back and seeing that there's no um, job for them. Their business that was shut down has now gone bankrupt. And then it just, it's going to be a cascading effect. They don't have money to pay for something else. And so at that end... Um, we have to really look at maybe I don't have too much, but if we all start sharing at this time, inshallah ta'ala, we can get through this together. And this ayah reminds us of that, of all these people, the parents, the relatives, the orphans, the needy, your near neighbor, your neighbors that are far away from you, your companions by your side, like your colleagues and travelers and such that we start thinking that, hey, from all these categories, I want in my mizan on the day of judgment that I took care of um, all these people. We also want to learn that, um, uh, sorry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And they hide that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them from his bounty. And this thing now, there are um, historical um, um, tafsirs of this, but the ayah is general. And even people that have wealth or they have a certain preferred skin tone or they have a um, certain class or lineage, in, in, in society, all of that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they hide the fact that it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's 
Um, they, they hide the fact that it came from Allah. If they understood that it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then really they should be thankful. And they should r- respond to that. You know what? The wealth that I have, Allah gave it to me. You know, this job that I have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected me. And I have a job after COVID. And, and um, the health that I have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that gave me my health. Rather than being con- um, conceitful and treating people bad, they should actually have the opposite effect. They should be with humility that all of these gifts are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why I'm sharing with you. And we want to also have friends that remind us to give. This is the big gem that if you have somebody who's telling, who's not, you know, you might have a friend that's not encouraging good. And then you actually have a friend or somebody close to you that's discouraging good. It's just, which is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about in this verse, that um, they actually encourage, uh, discourage people from being generous. They encourage stinginess. Don't spend on such and such. Don't give. And so we want to have those, um, those people in our lives that encourage us to do good. You know what? Uh, uh, a final point here I want to remind you guys that not everybody has the ability and the power to launch an online fundraiser. Okay, Alhamdulillah in Ramadan, there's going to be some amazing fundraisers that you're going to see online. And Alhamdulillah for all of those things. And those are usually centralized hubs for the wealth to go out. Okay, but you have to understand that there are neighbors very close to you that are not going to be part of those fundraisers, are not going to be um, receiving assistance from those fundraisers. The only person that really sees them is you. Um, and we need to focus also in our sadaqah on our neighbors and the people close to us and our colleagues and our relatives. People that will not receive these online fancy fundraisers, but they still need help. And so you need to go around, you know, start putting out the feelers. You know, whenever I hear somebody say something like, you know what, there's no one needy in my city. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> there's no one needy in your city you haven't left your house for like how many weeks this is even from before there are needy people everywhere you just have to ask around usually they're just one person away you just kind of ask around do you know somebody who knows the needy people do you know somebody who knows the needy people and then there will be somebody in the community that's like you know what i know like 80 families they could be refugee families they could be um, people that lost their jobs during this time and they're really in need and sometimes the some of the best sadaqa is you're giving to somebody who would never ask they would never get in line to receive handouts but they're in need and it needs you to pay attention to that type of person and help them out inshallah ta'ala and that might be kind of along the lines of the companion by your side Allah ta'ala alam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa man yuqa shuha nafsihi and whoever protects themselves from the stinginess of themselves, for verily those will be the successful people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the generous people, inshallah ta'ala, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also treat us in the same way and will be generous to us and enter us into paradise. Jazakallah khairan. We are done. If you have questions, I'm happy to welcome your questions now. If Sundus is here and she wants to ask a Riddle, bring on your riddle, Sundas. First question, Nurin says, but doesn't zakat to Muslims come first and charity later? Um, so Nurin, the, uh, the topic of zakat, if you, it's like, what is the intention of what you're giving? It, if it is zakat, then yes, that zakat goes to Muslims. So we're not... That's not necessarily what we're talking about here. We're talking about ihsan to people. We're not talking about zakat. Zakat is something more specific. Allah Alam. Wadiya says, can we also give sadaqah to non-Muslims? Absolutely. Technically, you can even give zakat to non-Muslims in... Um, there is one of the categories in zakat that you can give to non-Muslims. Zakat al I'm talking about. Zahra says, 
fasting of Ramadan will be valid for everyone if anyone saw moon of Ramadan in all of the world. Is this authentic? Zahra, I don't know what you mean by is this authentic. If you're talking about is that a hadith or is that an opinion? Um, it is one of the opinions on, on that video that I made about uh, moon fighting. You might find it. I spoke about the difference of opinion about moon sighting and uh, moon sighting, moon fighting. One of them is an opinion that anybody who sees the moon in the world, um, that if Ramadan fasting is valid for all of them. So uh, Zahra, it is a valid opinion. I, I, you're asking, is it authentic? I would say that it's a valid opinion. And that is correct. It is a valid opinion amongst other opinions. Nimra says, there's this attitude, <laughs> Nimra, where are you from? <laughs> where you start taking care of your close relatives, they think you want or need something from them. Even though you're doing it for Allah's sake, they still think you want something from them and that makes them run away from you. And Nimra, I would say that if that's the case, then it's like maybe they haven't experienced, um, you know, they haven't experienced enough that you're taking care of them. So you might want to be gentle. And there's other categories, Pakistan, okay? Um, there might be other categories such as uh, neighbors, such as quotes, rather, and there's ways to give without necessarily putting your stamp on the money that's been given. There's ways to give without announcing to the world that, hey, it's me that gave you this money. Mukhtar says, do I have to give zakat, but I'm still living with parents? Mukhtar, um, if you're living with parents, it makes no difference if you're living with parents. If you have the amount, uh, if you have one of the categories of zakah, if you have one of the categories of zakah, such as uh, in your case, maybe financial, maybe you've got some gold or something like that, um, or sheep, I don't, I don't know if you have sheep, but let's say you've got some money, it passes the zakat amount and it's been with you for one year, just sitting there, then you have to, um, you have to pay zakat, has nothing to do with where you're living. Alaha says, can we make dua by reading from paper? Yes, you can. So what I like to do, just so I have better concentration, if I have a paper, and I'm making dua, then I try to like read it and then look up, look up so that I'm saying it from memory. But I think what you're talking about is like, what if there's du'as that are written down in like a booklet or something like that? Can you, um, can you make dua? And yeah, you can, it's okay. Aisha says, what kind of zakat is that to the non-Muslims? The zakat I'm talking about is um, uh, So the Prophet ﷺ, uh, well, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says from the people who are to receive zakat are those whose hearts are close to becoming Muslim. They're not Muslim and perhaps this zakat that they receive will help guide them to Islam. It is permissible to give them from zakatul mal which is the zakat on money. There's a lot of maybe confusion between zakat at this point in Ramadan. There's zakat al-fitr that happens at the end of the month, end of the month for Eid, zakat al-fitr, and that is only for Muslims. That's at the end of the month, and that's actually something less, meaning that it might come out to like just $10 or less than $10. So we're talking about zakat al-mal in this, in this case. And then zakat al-mal happens throughout the year. All right, Paras says, if a person works at our home and earn around 30K and is only person earning for the family, which isn't much here in Pakistan, and that person is under debt, can zakat money be given to that person? Um, so Paras, if that person is, um, is Muslim, it can be considered zakat, yes. They can, be, they can receive zakat. If they're not Muslim, you can still help them and give them charity and you'll be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it doesn't uh, um, um, count for your obligation to pay your zakat al man. Sami Amir Jan says, Is it allowable for doctors to pray standing as they are wearing PPE? Wallahu alam, I'm pretty sure it would be, 
Wallahu alam, if they can do sajda, they can take off their garment and Allah knows the situation that they're in. It probably is allowed, wallahu alam, but it's better to receive a fatwa like that. I'm sure that somebody's asked a question like that on, I'm sure if you Google it, you'll find a better answer, but it probably is permissible, wallahu alam. All right, you guys, here is Sundus's riddle for the night. A horse is tied to a 20 foot long rope. He wants to get some hay that's 30 feet away, but he is able to get to the hay easily. How it come? Okay, so the horse is tied to a 20 foot long rope and he wants to get some hay that's 30 feet away, but he is able to get to the hay easily. How it come? This is from Sundus. You guys can answer in the comments. Rajab says, what would you advise in a situation where Muslims don't trust their leadership with accountability for sadaqah and zakah? So Rajab, the main thing is that you pay the zakah, doesn't, you don't have to give it to a specific person to distribute it. Technically, you should be the one making sure that it arrives. And I actually bring this up, like sometimes people think that, oh, I just dropped it in a box somewhere and like it's, it's not my business anymore. That it's something serious, especially zakatul mal. Zakatul mal needs to go to the needy people, it needs to go to recipients of zakah. Sometimes sadaqah can sit around for a little bit longer to be distributed, but zakah needs to arrive. Allah alam. Shaz Sayyid says, how do you decide who to give? I understand it's family and close relatives first. What I mean is that with the current situation, do you donate to local charities or charities helping countries in worse situations like Gaza or Syria? May Allah be with everyone. Um, what I say, Shaz, is why not both? Why don't we do both? So it doesn't mean that because I gave to my neighbor, I don't give to people who are needy somewhere else. And because I gave to people who are needy someone else, doesn't mean that, oh, I don't give to my neighbors and such and that. And if you look at the list that we were talking about in the verse, there's a long list of people, neighbors, neighbors that are far, close, colleagues, relatives. So there's a lot. So you start to see that it, it has to be our attitude to give. It might not only be like, hey, I gave all my money and everything and I'm, I'm, I'm broke and everything's gone. I gave it to one person. It's not necessarily the case. And, and yeah, so spread it around. Shazard says, does a student on scholarship have to pay as a cat? If you have the nisab, nisab is the threshold, the amount of money. I don't know what the nisab is right now. Maybe somebody can comment what the nisab is. They can reply to you if they know. But if you have that amount of currency and it's been with you for more than a year, then you have to pay his account. It doesn't matter if you're on scholarship. Um, and what I've found is that sometimes students who are on scholarship, they get, they get a big lump sum of money and it's sitting in their bank account and um, and then it's meant for the next four years, for example. If that's the case, then you probably have passed the zakat nisab. And and just as a general principle, guys, zakatul mal, zakatul mal, the zakat that's paid on wealth has nothing to do with your personal situation. It is focused on the money. So if the money in that property and that asset has been sitting for one year, then zakat is to be paid. Doesn't matter. Somebody asked earlier, hey, if I'm living at home, who cares? If you're a student on scholarship, who cares? It doesn't make a difference what your situation is. If the money's been sitting around, it's past nisab, and it's been sitting around for that long, then you need to pay zakat. And guys, we're done. Sundas, can you tell us the answer to the riddle? Some people are saying. Altaf says the answer to the riddle is Cousin Muna said the hay is only halfway from where the horse is tied. Some people said the rope is not tied to anything. That's what I would assume. That the rope is not tied to anything. That even though the ro horse is tied, but the horse, the rope isn't tied to anything else.
All right, guys, we're done. If you want to hang out to see what the, um, the answer to the riddle is, we'll let Sundas post it. Otherwise, I say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Have a blessed tarawih tonight, inshallah ta'ala, wherever you may be. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.